is the study of geography and these are the branches of geography physical geography human geography and practical geography these are among the few topics that we we'll look at when we study geography we look at industrialization we look at forestry we look at tea plantations maize plantations brick making industry among many many others welcome to geography from one lesson hello learners we are in our form one geography lesson 12 and we are going to look at the elements of weather. The last time we were together in the previous lesson, we talked about the, the weather station and we saw out that uh, that is where weather elements are observed and recorded from. And we also talked about uh, the instruments which are found in the weather station. And uh, these instruments that we looked at, they included um, the thermometers, sunshine recorder, hygrometer, wind vane, among others. And uh, so today we are going to look at the weather elements that are measured in the weather station. That is our, um, our focus today. So we are going to look at um, uh, sunshine as one of the weather elements that uh, is measured in a, a weather station. And we said that um, sunshine is uh, the sun rays that are released by the sun. These are the sun rays that are able to reach the earth's surface. And so, uh, the direct sun rays from the sun. And these sun rays, um, they travel through the space, and that is the earth's atmosphere, and they are able to reach the earth's surface. The sun rays are measured by an instrument that we call the sunshine recorder. The sunshine recorder is able to measure the intensity of the sunshine and the duration, the, the length of time that we were able to receive sunshine and the strength of that sunshine in that particular day. So measurement is done every day. Today our interest is not on the measurement of uh, sunshine. We are talking about sunshine itself as an element of weather. So sunshine, we have said, is the direct sun rays that are re released by the sun and they are able to reach the earth surface. Um, the strength of sunshine, the intensity that is, and the duration of sunshine depends on a number of factors. They are the factors that influence the amount of sunshine and the duration that we, a place is able to receive that amount of sun rays. And uh, these factors, they include um, latitude, uh, they include aspect, they may also include altitude and they also include cloud cover. Those are the factors that influence uh, the sunshine of our place. So we look at each one of these factors. We are talking about one factor that influences sunshine is uh, latitude. And so we ask ourselves, what is latitude? we would like to understand what latitude is before we understand how it influences uh, sunshine. Now, latitude is the distance of a place north or south of the equator. It is the distance of a place away from the equator. So the places which are nearer the equator, those that are even nearest, 
uh, we call them low latitudes. And there are those that are midway, away from the equator. The, we refer to them as mid-latitudes. Those that are very far away, either to the south or to the north, uh, we call them high latitudes. Uh, latitude is measured from the equator, either northwards to the North Pole, or southwards to the South Pole. Uh, at the equator it is zero degrees, and at North Pole it is 90 degrees north of the equator, and that is a very high uh, latitude. So, the places which occur on the equator or within the tropics, 10 degrees north or south of the equator, 20 degrees north or south of the equator, uh, those places receive a lot of sunshine. The, the amount of sunshine is maximum. They also receive um, sunshine for a long time of, of the day. So we are correct to say that uh, latitude influences sunshine. Other factors kept constant. The places which are near the equator will receive more sunshine. Uh, and the places which are found in high latitudes, they receive low amount of sunshine. They are, the intensity of sunshine is reduced. And so uh, we have said that latitude influences sunshine. Why does then uh, latitude influence sunshine? Why do we have the places which are near the equator receiving more sunshine and those that are very far away from the equator uh, receiving less sunshine? Uh, so we have a number of factors that uh, have led to this. Number one, uh, we are saying that the sun rays which are released by the sun as they travel towards the earth's surface, the distance that they cover is very short before they land on the equator they cover shorter distance. So distance is one of the factors that um, those that uh, travel to the north or to the south pole, they cover a long distance. And in this case, they use a lot of energy along the way. And so much of the energy that they uh, acquired from the sun is uh, used in uh, traveling. So by the time they are going to land on the earth surface, they are already weakened. But those that travel very close uh, distance, they reach on the earth surface when they are full of energy and therefore all the energy is used in, uh, um, in, 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 in giving light, yes. Then we, we also talk about the transparency of the atmosphere. That in some cases, a place may not receive much light uh, because the atmosphere is has got an accumulation of uh, particles like dust particles, uh, smoke, you know, pollen grains, all that, uh, water vapor, they reduce the strength of the sunshine. Uh, we are also talking about uh, the angle at which the sunshine is going to land on the, on the ground. Uh, at the equator, the sunshine uh, reaches the earth surface at right angles. So each one of the rays uh, travels and hits the ground at a 90 degrees. So uh, the sun rays um, are able to warm a very short uh, surface area, very small surface area. And if they are traveling to high latitudes, they are going to land on the earth surface at acute angles. So they will be assigned a larger surface area. So they, they will make that place, uh, the strength of that sunshine is going to be definitely less. So in that case, we are trying to say that the angle at which the sun rays reach the earth's surface also de determines the amount of sunshine in that particular latitude. And so we also talk about uh, the nature of the surface on which the sun rays are going to, to, to land. If the surface is uh, rough, uh, then in the dark, then it's going to absorb more heat. If the surface is li light colored and smooth, it will reflect away much of the heat. 
if the surface is covered by vegetation, obviously the, the heat is not going to be so high. So sunshine is also affected by the nature of the, the surface. Now, so that is what, that, that point we were trying to say that latitude affects uh, sunshine of a place. Now we also talk about aspect as one of the factors that influences sunshine. Aspect, what is aspect? We start by divining it and we say aspect is the direction of a place uh, in relation to the source of light, which is the sun. So uh, this place, is it facing the sun or it's facing away from the sun? And uh, if it is facing away from the sun, then it will not have much light. If it is facing towards the sun, it will definitely receive much light. Now this uh, particular point, this factor of aspect does not affect the areas which lie on the equator. They affect uh, the areas which are found in high latitude sunray. So the sun is always overhead, the areas which are found on the equator. And those that are in the north, they are facing the sun every day and so they receive light for a longer time and they also receive more heat energy from the sun. And those, those that are facing to the north, they will receive light for a lesser time and the, the, the intensity of the sunlight will be less. We are also talking about uh, the, in the south, the slopes which are facing to the north. We call them the north facing slopes. Um, they will be warmer. They receive more light for a longer time of the day than the south facing slopes because if they are facing now they are in south africa like in the drunken spark mountains the south facing slopes are facing towards the south pole and therefore they are facing away from the sun so that is aspect and therefore we have talked about latitude as a factor and we have also talked about aspect let us talk about altitude we define the term altitude and we say altitude is the height above the sea level. Now areas which are low in altitude, in the height above the sea level, we call them or we refer to them as low altitude. And the areas which are very high above the sea level, like on top of the mountains, we say they are high altitude. Now the areas which are found uh, at the bottom of the mountains, at sea level, they receive more light than those that are on the highlands. Those that are on the highlands, their light is interfered with the temperatures. They are interfered with the temperatures. So the intensity of the sunshine is going to be less as compared to the lowlands. So altitude influences the intensity of sunshine, not the duration. The place can receive light the whole day, but it could be weak you know, as compared to the light that, uh, the, the heat or the light that is at uh, the bottom of the mountain. And then finally, we talk about cloud cover. The areas uh, which have got clouds, yes, uh, these areas, they do not receive much sunshine because that the, the sun rays which are traveling from the sun are either absorbed by the clouds or they are scattered and thrown back into the outer space. So uh, the areas which are found below the clouds, if it's a thick cloud cover, they may not receive much light. And even if they receive the sun rays, it will not be as intense as the ones which are found in areas without cloud cover, areas with clear uh, skies or cloudlessness. So that is uh, the sunshine now that we are talking about, the direct sun rays from the sun. And um, they, we want to conclude by saying that sunshine is responsible for the heat energy that is found in the planet Earth. It is responsible for the sun or the amount of heat that is found both on the earth's surface and in the earth 
at atmosphere. Without the sun, we could not have any any light. We could not have any heat because it is the sun is the primary source of sunlight. Uh, the moon, the, it only reflects the light from the sun. So we don't talk about the moon, we don't talk about the stars, they are too far. And some of them are not even uh, objects which release their own light. So we, are, uh, we have our sun, uh, our nearest heavenly body that is responsible for our heat energy. And that is uh, bringing us uh, to the good end of our lesson. And I want to thank you for having been with us. We are very grateful that you found time to watch our content. Kindly press the subscribe button down there and leave a like if the content was helpful to you. Join us in the next lesson. Thank you.